is caffeine. Um, there's a fair bit, again, if you start reading about caffeine and the potential pros and cons for endurance races, there's, uh, there's all sorts of opinions. So we're going to ask, um, actually what we might do, James, uh, just ask James and, and Andrew their experiences and then we'll put the science behind it again. You drink coffee? Too much. He drinks flat whites, actually. It's too much. Um, <laughs> um, you, do, you do drink coffee. Do you drink it for, um, to help your running or just because you like it? Or do you, have it, do you time it with a race or before an event so that you think you get a benefit out of it? Um, so most days of the week I drink it just because I like it and it's convenient and it's um, performance enhancing. It's right, it's right there, so it's very convenient. <laughs> performance enhancing for my work I think, um, so I like it, I like it too much. Um, but um, I think, um, I have it before training sessions on the weekends because I, I rarely train um, hard in the morning during the week and I, I think it gives me that pick me up on the weekends when I need to go hard at 8 in the morning which is not when I like to run fast. Tux? Yeah, I drink coffee um, just because I like it, really. Do you have one before a race? I've Did never had a coffee before a race. You don't ever? No. More to do. It sort of gets the bowels going a little bit too, so we're right. <laughs> trying to avoid it. Yeah, it definitely does have that effect on something. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've been tempted to try it before a race, but I just, yeah, it's interesting. I just I've never done, done it. So. I've done both, so I've had it before races and not had it. I don't. I just like it, so I do tend to have it before a race just because it, uh, I definitely, uh, if it's a strong one, get shakes and uh, your heart rate gets elevated and I think, uh, I don't know, it just gets you, gets you woken up, like James said, before, a, before an early morning race. Um, then the, actually the other question, which again we'll put to Peter, is just uh, there's now a whole lot of uh, products, so gels and things with caffeine added. So um, and Coke is a pretty staple on drink stops in, uh, in triathlon races, in, uh, in half Ironman and Ironman races. They've got Coke for the second half of the course in the six foot track, so from 20, 20k onwards I think it is, uh, which is obviously a, a huge sugar hit as well as a bit of caffeine. Um, and I think they have it at the, do they have it at North Face on the drink stops or people um, uh, often have their own supporters yeah, eat Coke anyway? Yeah, take your own. Take your own as well. The way I Coke to the North Face. Um, Peter, is um, actually th a tiny bit of science, which why well, actually this is um, pseudoscience because it's just my, what I have read. Um, <laughs> the thought behind having caffeine is that it, this goes a little, a little bit back to that carb fat thing, is that it mobilizes fatty acids in your body. So the supposed benefit for endurance runners is that you, if you have a coffee before a race in the morning, it improves your ability to metabolize fat and there's more energy in a gram of fat than there is in a gram of carbohydrates and you carry almost infinite fat stores or certainly enough for a 100k race. Um, so therefore it's thought that it sort of turns on your fat metabolism um, earlier than it would if you didn't have a coffee. So I guess that's why I started taking it and then I like it so I still do. Um, but what's the science behind that? Um, basically we don't actually know. The, oh, really? Yeah, the actual breakdown, there's so many different mechanisms of how it could work, but the one thing it definitely does, it lowers your perceived exertion. So, okay. it, it, you, if, for example, um, so you can work harder uh, or at the same level, but you feel like you're working easier. So it definitely lowers your relatively perceived exertion. How it works is, yes, we think there's some... Um, it, it does affect our, I suppose, macronutrient usage. It's not definite and it's also just stuff going on in the brain. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of stuff with the mouth to brain and performance enhancement that we don't actually understand, but then we know it gives a performance enhancement. So, for example, if you're sick of drinking Powerade or Gatorade towards the end of a race, just swish it around in your mouth and spit it out and you'll still get a performance enhancement. So the Coke at the back end, it has the caffeine, but also because it's so sweet, in my money is that, that that sugar sweetness in your mouth is what's really giving you the extra kick at the back end of a long race, even more so than really? what you're actually consuming. So there's a fair bit of cool research coming out about that. But back to caffeine, yes, it works. I'm pro-caffeine in life. Um, uh, try it before you actually implement it in training um, and depending on your distance. So if you're doing something shorter than yes and right. having it beforehand, during your long runs and I usually, um, for even like in marathons, I usually tell my athletes to start taking it from halfway to the back end 
Um, important things is the performance enhancing amount. It's different for everyone because some people have four to eight coffees a day typically, whereas some people don't have it in daily life at all. But the official number is three to six milligrams per kilogram. So a lot of people take no dose, they'll only take one. Um, one probably won't do much for you. You should be taking two to three, depending on how heavy you are. Um, and I usually say test, test with the true amount that will give you performance enhancement and then if you feel like it's too much, then scale back. Um, and the other important point is that it's in your system for four hours, so you should only need top-ups. If you take something at halfway, it takes 30 to 60 minutes to kick in, so you want to try and time it just before you know you start getting fatigued. Um, and then you can top up with the gels if you like, caffeinated gel or coke you don't need to keep on taking the no-dose. Um, the good thing about your sport is that if you get over-aroused, um, you're not going to drop balls or um, lose accuracy. So I, I definitely recommend trying it, but just it works differently for everyone else. But I'd give it a go. I would recommend you yeah, back end and then you, you keep on topping up. Um, I wouldn't take it at the start and then not take it again because you will feel it when it's out of your system. Um, the other, I suppose, is that if you react badly, like people that don't take caffeine regularly might vomit from it or get a headache. So that's why you have to try it in your training before you use it in a race, 100%. But it, it, it's available in pretty much everything these days. You can get caffeinated ice cream, marshmallows, seeds, nuts, um, everything. Just one thing to add that both um, Mark and Peter touched on was there's this um, physiological sort of je ne sais quoi that is called central fatigue that the really top athletes like the guys here tonight uh, can draw on in the final stages of a race where they're physiologically spent, they're very, very tired, or their energy, energy systems are exhausted. Then they start getting tired mentally, but then they can find something in reserve that <coughs> translates into a podium finish. So the caffeine might be something that can help with that central fatigue, where you're tired mentally and that's affecting your performance in the back half of a race. So that's, I think, what Peter was saying with putting stuff in your mouth, that, like Coke or whatever it is, that goes from the, the through your cranial nerves, from your mouth straight to your brain, and or has that delayed effect for 30 minutes until you absorb the caffeine, uh, where you mentally get a bit of a hit and you can go into that central fatigue zone and, and overcome that part of your um, exhaustion.